now let's go back to biopsy. You, you spend a lot of time in your talk saying, you know, if, if you're a Gleason 6, you don't really spend too much time worrying about this. And the truth is, I get scared uh, for patients in terms of pathology readings. What do you do? Do you, do you tell every patient, because th this is a pathologist telling you you have a Gleason 6, you have a low-risk cancer. Yeah. Do you have everybody get a second reading? Or are you just so confident in your pathologist that you think that when you he or she tells you it's a 6, it's a 6? So... The short answer is we don't. Uh, the the biopsies we do in house, you know, we have really outstanding GU focused pathologists. That most of their life is spent looking at prostate cancer. So uh, when we get slides from outside, I do it when something doesn't quite add up. So, for example, if there's a patient with very extensive Gleason six. We know that the between observer variation between pathologists is pretty high, probably mm -hmm. around 30%. It, but mostly it would be great, uh, just upgraded by one, uh, you know, the, not, there's not a big difference between Gleason 3 plus 3 and Gleason 3 plus 10% pattern 4. Mm -hmm. There may just be a couple of high-powered fields. So if, if a patient has very extensive disease, then I get a second opinion. But mostly... I accept what the pathologist says. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is that despite all the variation and limitations of pathology interpretation, pathology is an art as well as a science. They don't always agree despite that. So clearly a lot of these thousands of patients around the world on surveillance, some of them are being undergraded by the pathologist. They have higher grade disease than is being reported. Still, the 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 mortality rate is still vanishingly low. Mm. Like ours at 2% is one of the highest. Hopkins, somewhere around 0.2%. Uh, they also, of course, have great pathology, but uh, I, it, this doesn't seem a big issue. And, you know, one other point to mention, the results of the SPCG4 study, uh, the randomized study of radical prostatectomy versus no treatment, yeah, just reported 29-year follow-up in the New England Journal. Major benefit of treatment for 4 plus 3 and higher. But for the Gleason 3 plus 4, grade group 2, no treatment benefit in terms of prostate cancer mortality. So, you know, most people increasingly think some 3 plus 4s need to be treated, but a lot of them do not. And maybe that also emphasizes why the path limitations of pathology haven't translated into into higher mortality rates.